Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this year's Mistress of Ceremonies, Assemblywoman Valerie Veneri Huddle. Please rise as she makes her way to the stage. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise and welcome our senior senator, Robert Menendez. President of Planned Parenthood Federation of America, Cecil Richards. Montclair State University President, Dr. Susan Cole. And this year's Ivan Halina Menendez Trailblazer Award Honorees. And now, please remain standing as we welcome the New Jersey Air National Guard. I'll just give a moment for our honorees to again. Thank you. And please remain standing as we welcome the New Jersey Air National Guard 177 Fighter Wing Color Guard. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Please welcome Pasquac Valley High School Choir to sing the Star Spangled Banner.
thank you once again to Passaic Valley High School Choir. I would now like to invite Rabbi Clifford Colwyn to give the invocation. Rabbi? In synagogues all over the world yesterday on the Jewish Sabbath, we read from our Holy Scriptures a particular section. It comes from that moment in the Bible where the Israelites have just left Egypt. They are about to begin their journey, and there are some important things that Moses needs to tell them. And he gathers them together with interesting words. He says to them in the Hebrew words of the Torah, Vayakel Moshe et kol edat p'nei Yisrael, Mother gathered the whole people of Israel. And there's a problem. Why did he need the word kol, which means whole? Why could it not merely say that he gathered the people of Israel? Why the whole people of Israel? It's redundancy. But we don't believe in redundancy in the Bible, so there's got to be an explanation. And the explanation, many believe, is this. There was nobody lower in Egypt where they had just come from. This was a people who in Egypt did not count. And if there was anything they needed to learn as they began their new life and their new land, it had to be that everybody counted. And so when Moses gathered them together, he did so emphasizing all of us, old and young, rich and poor, healthy and sick, men and women, everybody is equally important. Since that time, it has been an aspiration of our tradition that we regard everyone else as our equal, everyone as an equal member of our community, and to those who exemplify that, to those who fight for that, those who strive to make sure that that is indeed the future we all enjoy, are among those whom our Jewish tradition regards as the most worthy of honor. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon and to join in this important ceremony. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Rabbi. Very well said. I would like to acknowledge a few dignitaries here this afternoon with us in the audience today. We have Senator Bob Gordon, Senator. Assemblywoman, Assemblywoman Pam Lampett, Bergen County Freeholder Chair Tracy Zor, Bergen County Freeholders Mary Amoroso and Jermaine Ortiz, and my favorite, uh, Mayor Bengalwood Frank Huddle. And we also have um, many honorees uh, who have received awards uh, within the last six years. So welcome to our past honorees as well. You know, when Senator Menendez personally called me to be his mistress of ceremonies for the Ivan Halina Menendez Trailblazer Awards, I was very humbled and honored but when he told me who the keynote speaker was, Cecile Richards, I was even more thrilled. And I think, as you know, and I hope that Cecile knows, that we in New Jersey have been fighting to restore funding for Planned Parenthood for probably the last seven years.
And I must add that we're talking about mothers today. I would like to mention um, Cecil's mother, the late former governor of Texas, who was a trailblazer, probably an original trailblazer in her own right. And I got a chance to tell Cecil that I saw her uh, Broadway show titled Anne, and what a fabulous show and perspective and insight to what a tremendous family. And so, Cecil, you certainly are an icon in your mother's footsteps, and you know that you are a leader for all of us here today when we talk about women's health. And I also, when I heard the honorees, who they were, I couldn't be more happier, because I know most of them personally, and they are truly extraordinary women and trailblazers. I want to take a minute to applaud Senator Menendez. As a native of Hudson County, I have the deepest admiration for you, Senator. And I think everyone knows it, but I have to repeat it. He is the only public servant that I know who has served in every aspect of public office. From being the youngest school board member to mayor, a member of the New Jersey General Assembly, the New Jersey State Senate, to a member of Congress, and now our senior U.S. Senator from New Jersey. As you know, he was born to Cuban immigrants and his mother, Ivan Helena, was a seamstress. And it was Ivan Helena who instilled in him the values and respect that has shaped his career. When it comes to women's equality, equal rights, equal pay, equal treatment, equally affordable health care, he lives up to the values taught by his mother. He is the lead Senate sponsor of the Equal Rights Amendment. He was a leading supporter of the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. He introduced the International Violence Against Women Act. And he has worked to ensure that preventative services, such as mammograms and well visits, are available without any out-of-pocket costs. And thank you, Senator for recently being a leader and a leading voice to secure and keep the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> We'd like to quote the following that Senator Robert Menendez has often said, and I quote, Protecting the rights of women and fighting against any efforts to turn back the clock is now more critical than ever. We cannot tolerate living in a country where women have to work harder, longer, and for less money just to get ahead. We cannot stand quietly by while women are denied the American dream and access to health care and education. Our mothers and daughters deserve the same opportunity and respect as our fathers and sons. And Senator, that speaks volumes for who you are, and we are so proud of you. I would like to end with a definition of a glass ceiling. According to Miriam Webster, a glass ceiling is defined as an intangible or invisible barrier within a hierarchy that prevents women or minorities from obtaining upper level positions. However, all of us here today know that Senator Menendez refuses to accept that definition. Today he is standing with a handful of exceptional women who have achieved success to make yet another seismic crack in that glass ceiling. And I am so proud to call Senator Menendez my friend. Thank you.
And now it is my deep honor to introduce Montclair State University, the president of Montclair State University, Dr. Susan Cole. We should have had the podium over there. It's a little quicker to get to. But <laughs> I'm looking all over for you. Welcome, doctor. Next time, I'll bring my bicycle. <laughs> Thank you, Assemblywoman Huddle. And good afternoon to all. And welcome, a very, very warm welcome to Montclair State University. We are really honored that, once again, Senator Menendez has chosen the university for the site of his annual Women's History Month celebration. And I offer my congratulations to the recipients of the Evangelina Menendez Trailblazer Award. I want to say um, just a brief word about the woman for whom this award is named and for the many women like her who had the courage to pick up their families and embark on an uncertain journey to an unknown country where they had nothing and didn't speak the language, but where they had, where they had hoped that their efforts and labor could yield a better life for their children. Like Senator Menendez, I am sure, and like many here today, I too am the child of immigrants to this country. When we think about Evangelina Menendez and my mother and my grandmother on their amazing journeys, I know they could not possibly have seen in their minds a son who would become a United States Senator or a daughter who would become the president of a university. But they carried with them the things that would make those accomplishments possible. They carried unbelievable courage and determination. And they carried hope and they pass those qualities on to their children. At this moment in time, when there are those who believe that this nation should disown those among us who, like Evangelina, have made this courageous journey of hope, that they should be branded as criminals, and that we should turn our back on the world, we, we must speak in a loud voice to say that immigrants to this country have given back in their contributions far, far more than they have taken. And that we will not, <laughs> and that we, we will not be part of a misguided and self-destructive cleansing of what it means to be an American. So whether we or our parents or our grandparents were born in this country or elsewhere, we all have the same task before us. And the women who will be honored by this award today, and Assemblywoman Huddle as well, can serve to remind us that the task requires us to be brave and determined in the never, never finished struggle for justice. And especially remind us that we must teach our daughters to be brave. <laughs> starting, starting about in the 1980s, women of all races across this country 
began to reverse the prior historical trends and started earning the majority of baccalaureate and master's degrees conferred in this country. And since 2005, they have been earning the majority of doctoral degrees as well. The vast majority of them from public institutions, public universities, just like Montclair State. Women fought long and hard for equal access to higher education, and they achieved it. They achieved it. But the battle for the rights of women is far from over in our country, and we need to continue to encourage our girls to claim their full place in society and all professions and occupations. So, Senator Menendez, while we love you, someday New Jersey would like to see a woman senator. <laughs> So, you just keep on sending your girls to us at Montclair State University, and we will continue to prepare them for accomplishment in the world. I am truly deeply grateful to Senator Menendez, uh, as Assemblywoman Huddle said, for the incredibly articulate voice that he has lent to so many important issues. And I am grateful to all of you for taking the time to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Cole, a leader in your own right as president of this tremendous university. What a long way Montclair has come under your leadership. And now it is my honor to introduce the person of the hour, uh, Senator Menendez. As I said before, I know him way back from Hudson County and his earlier days. And I will tell you uh, that when anyone needed to go see their representative, he was there, he listened, and he helped. And as recently as last week when I was in Trenton, I had my Young Women's Leadership Program I had my interns down there visiting, and he took the time out of his busy schedule to come and talk to these young women and encourage them, encourage them to enter public life. And so without further ado, Senator Menendez, you are our hero today amongst all the trailblazers that you bring with you. My mentor and friend, Senator Robert Menendez. Thank you, uh, Assemblywoman uh, Huddle, who is just a fantastic advocate, uh, not just for the people of her legislative district, but uh, for women and families across our state. Thank you so much for your work. Uh, let me say we're thrilled to be back at Montclair State University, and we are thrilled on behalf of the six women who are being recognized, the other honorees who have been here from the past, and to our keynote speaker to have an overwhelming crowd. Wow, when Women's History Month comes, New Jersey packs the house. So. <laughs> Welcome to our seventh annual Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction Trailblazer Awards. Every year this event gets bigger and better thanks to volunteers, organizations, and leaders from across the state. So let me thank uh, a few people who helped make this possible. Uh, one of, uh, as I said, one of the great advocates for women and families in our state, our mistress of ceremony, State Assemblywoman Valerie Huddle. Valerie, thank you so much for your leadership. Let me thank Rabbi Cohen for his words of wisdom. Uh, and Madam President, I thought I was going to use that more often, but Madam President, Dr. Cole, thank you for your thoughtful remarks and continued leadership at Montclair State University. Let me thank all of the Montclair uh, 
members of the faculty and the staff and the Montclair Police Department and so many others who have made today such a seamless effort. Please join me in thanking Montclair State University, one of our great institutions. I want to thank the New Jersey Air National Guard Fighter Wing 177 for their service to our country, and I am so glad that Chief Master Sergeant Falari, one of this year's honorees, could have her very own color guard here today. We appreciate those young men and women. We also got to hear the national anthem performed by uh, one of our winners, Arjean Safari's very own Pascack Valley High School Choir. Exquisite voices, thank them as well. And you'll hear from her uh, in a moment, but ex please give an extended and warm welcome to this year's keynote speaker, a champion for women's rights, a tireless advocate for healthy families, the president of Planned Parenthood, Cecile Richards. Thank you, Cecile, for taking the time out of an incredible schedule for being here with us this year and honoring these women. Every year, I am so moved, so humbled, and so inspired uh, by the outpouring of support for this event because you're here because you understand, just as I always have, that Women's History Month is just as much about the future as it is about the past. Today, we honor six remarkable women from across New Jersey with the Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction Trailblazer Awards. The size of the crowd is a testament to their achievements. These women are leaders in their fields, respected by their colleagues, admired by their peers, beloved by their families. They protect the security of our country, the safety of our communities, they bring creativity into our classrooms and justice into our courtrooms, and they brighten our collective futures, not just as New Jerseyans, but as Americans. They are Command Chief Master Sergeant Janine Filari of the New Jersey Air National Guard, Tawanda Jones, the founder of the Camden Sophisticated Sisters, who you'll see light up the stage a little later, the Bergenfield Chief of Police, Kathy Madalone, New Jersey's Teacher of the Year, Arjan Safari of Pascack Valley High School, Hudson County Prosecutor Esther Suarez and Patricia Teffenhart, the director of the New Jersey Coalition Against Sexual Assault. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, seven years ago, I created the Evangelina Menendez Distinction, Women of Distinction Trailblazing Award as a tribute to my mother, who passed after a long, heartbreaking battle with Alzheimer's. Evangelina Lopez Padron may have never had the opportunity to meet the women we're recognizing today, but I know with all of my heart that she would be so proud of their achievements. I named the Trailblazer Awards after her because of all the trails she blazed for me. Trails that made it possible for me, the son of Cuban refugees, a kid who grew up poor in the tenements of Union City, to go on and become one of 100 sitting United States senators in a nation of 300 million people. To me, that is a promise that I seek to keep true for future generations. And I've come to realize that my entire career in public service has been guided by the values that my mother instilled in me. As New Jersey senior senator, every day, I have the privilege of fighting for priorities informed by her dreams, by her struggles, and by her courage. And believe me, she was courageous. My mother was born in Havana in 1919. She grew up under Batista's dictatorship. She saw right through Castro's empty promises, and she dreamt of a better life for her children, one of freedom and opportunity in the United States. My father did not want to leave their home. A few people do. But my mother believed in the promise of this country. And in 1953, she summoned enough courage for both of them to leave Cuba and bring my brother and sister to America. Just moments ago, we listened to a powerful rendition of the national anthem, an anthem that ends with Francis Scott Key's words that call America the land of the free and the home of the brave. What my mother taught me is that sometimes to be free, you must be brave. 
building a new life in a new land with a new language and no sure path to success, that takes courage. Now I know that the conditions my parents lived under in Cuba pale in comparison to many of today's refugees who are living through the greatest humanitarian crisis since World War II. But still, I see my mother's courage in them. So when I fight for Syrian refugees, the mother willing to risk it all to help her children escape the terror of ISIS, the dictatorship of Bashar al-Assad, the bombs dropped by Vladimir Putin, I'm fighting for courageous women like my mother. When my family arrived in the United States, nothing, jobs, housing, success was guaranteed. Yet, as a young boy, I watched my mother blaze trails for me. She woke up every morning and headed to a crowded factory where she worked as a seamstress. My mother was a smart woman, a hard worker, and the factory owner recognized her for it. He tasked her with many of the responsibilities of a factory manager, training new hires, supervising other women, and so on. But she never got paid the wages of her male counterparts. She never got a raise, and it wasn't fair. So today, when I fight for equal pay for equal work, when I fight as a Senate sponsor for the passage of the Equal Rights Amendment, when I fight for a level playing field for women in the workplace, I am fighting for her, for my daughter, for my granddaughter, and for all of our daughters to be in a country in which they fulfill their potential. My mother, my mother didn't understand much English, but every night after a long, hard day of work, she would make me sit down at the kitchen table and make me read my homework out loud to her. And I would say to her, but you don't understand what I'm saying. And she would say in Spanish, that's what you think. <laughs> so every night, I read every word. Now at the time, I couldn't imagine that after such a long day, sewing, cooking us dinner, cleaning the kitchen, she actually wanted me to really hear to recite this stuff. But nowadays, I understand why she did. You see, my mother may have been Cuban, but she had American dreams for me. She knew that education was my ticket out of the tenements, that the pursuit of knowledge was my pathway to success. And her belief in education guided me from kindergarten to college, from college to law school, and eventually to Congress in the United States. So today, when I fight to fully fund our public schools to expand access to early childhood education and after school programs to make college affordable so our kids don't have to graduate under a mountain of debt, I know I am fighting for the dreams of mothers like mine. Now, growing up we didn't have much. Nonetheless, my mother would invite neighbors from our tenement to join us for dinner. And I would say to her, but mama, there's not enough to go around. And she would say to me, just enough is more than enough. Hijo, she would say, we may not have much, but we still have more. And so long as we do, we can help those who have less. So today, when the president sends Congress a budget that protects huge giveaways to big oil, but ends meals on wheels for seniors, I cannot sit silent. I stand up for the values my mother instilled in me, values like compassion and a sense of community. Those values were at the forefront of my mind as my mother struggled for a long, long time with Alzheimer's disease. Caring for an ailing parent is hard work. And I watched my sister struggle with the intergenerational challenges of raising her own kids while caring for our mother and fighting to make sure she could afford the prescriptions and health services she needed. And as my mother fought this battle at home, I was fighting a battle in Washington, a battle to make health care affordable for every American. In the Senate, I served on the Senate Finance Committee, which writes our health care laws. And sitting on that committee, I had a front row seat to that debate, a debate that is unfortunately again playing out in Washington. And as someone who helped write the Affordable Care Act, I'd be the first to say that we should and can improve it. And I would be thrilled to have a real debate about how to make it work better for our families, but that's not the debate that is taking place in Washington. 
What's taking place is that there are those working not to replace the Affordable Care Act, but instead to repeal and erase affordable coverage for millions of Americans. To take our country back to a time when health insurance companies weren't required to cover basic benefits like prescription drugs, like mental health, like addiction therapy, like maternity care. Look at the task, look, the, the, the task of progress is never done. But at the end of the day, I will never apologize for helping to write a law that secured health insurance coverage for 24 million additional Americans. I will never stop defending a law that expanded Medicaid to working people, because Medicaid, before we expanded it, of course, if you were poor, you got your health care for Medicaid. But people who got up every day, worked hard, like my mom, who didn't have insurance when she was a seamstress, and worked to her bone every single day, but didn't get insurance at work and couldn't afford it, those are the people who we covered under extended Medicaid. And they deserve to see a doctor without being fearful of getting bankrupt. I'm not going to apologize for a law that stopped insurance companies from discriminating against women and charging them twice as much as their male counterpart in the same place. A law that for tens and tens of millions of consumers took insurance company abuses hidden in the fine print, like pre-existing conditions, sorry, you're one heart attack away from never getting insurance, lifetime limits, you have cancer, sorry, you hit your cap policy decisions and rescissions that made them relics of the past. That is no longer the law. So even during my mother's long goodbye, she shaped who I am and what I fight for. That's why I voted to pass the Fair Pay Act. That's why I'm fighting to make paid family leave a right afforded to everyone who cares for a newborn or an ailing parent. And that's why I will always stand for Planned Parenthood and the millions of women it cares for each and every year. Nor will I ever stop working to ensure that women like my mother, or your mother, your sister, your daughter, or my granddaughter, live in a world where women are not treated like second-class citizens, but as the trailblazers, they truly are. So now, before I introduce our keynote speaker, I want to close on a personal note. My mother was a trailblazer in every sense of the word. Her name, Evangelina, harkens back to Eve, the first woman, and Angel for the angel that she was. I'm so proud to have with us today my son, Rob, and my daughter, Alicia a talented, accomplished woman, a trailblazer in her own right, and now the mother of my first grandchild, my granddaughter, a granddaughter we're so proud to call Evangelina as well. I don't know what her future holds, and I don't know what trails she'll blaze. But here's the one thing I know for sure. She will grow up in a nation, as far as I'm concerned, that is stronger, fairer, more equal, and more just for all Americans, thanks to the work of the extraordinary women we honor today. So, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, you to our keynote speaker, the president of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America and the Planned Parenthood Action Fund, Cecile Richards. Cecile is a trailblazer in every sense of the word. In fact, for her, trailblazing is a family tradition. Her father, David Richards, was an accomplished civil rights lawyer. Her mother, the remarkable former Texas governor, Ann Richards, was a trailblazer and a straight talker known for her charm and her wit. So it's no surprise that at age 12, Cecile's first dance was at a benefit for the United Farm Workers. 
or that after graduating Brown University, she took a job as a labor organizer. After helping to elect her mother as governor of Texas, Cecile went on to lead America Votes, a national voter mobilization organization, to serve as deputy chief of staff to former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And in 2006, the Planned Parenthood Federation of America made one of the best decisions in its history when it chose Cecile Richards to serve as president. Under her leadership, Planned Parenthood has grown into a leading provider for women's health services with over 600 affiliate, 650 affiliate centers across our country, serving nearly 3 million women every year. And thanks to Cecile's eye for organizing, Planned Parenthood has grown into a powerful political force as well, a movement with over 7 million supporters united and working together for reproductive rights, for healthy families, and gender equality. To watch Cecile Richards at work is to see a portrait of grace, of intellect, and determination. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you Cecile Richards. Thank you so much, Senator Menendez, and thanks. Um, Great to be with you, very exciting. Um, I really want to thank Montclair State University and Dr. Cole, uh, and I want to say congratulations to the extraordinary honorees that you're about to see and their incredibly proud families who I got to see backstage. Uh, in addition, I wanted to acknowledge and hope they'll stand up two extraordinary women who um, get up every single day and ensure that the people of New Jersey can get health care at Planned Parenthood. We proudly serve more than 100,000 folks every single year. So please, uh, please thank Rosalind Rogers Collins and Tristy Brooks, the leaders of Planned Parenthood here in, uh, in New Jersey. Thank you. I, I was incredibly excited when Senator Menendez called and asked me to join you because uh, and, to, and to celebrate Women's History Month here in New Jersey because this is a state with a long history of raising fierce fighters for equality. And I know, right? Uh, I, and some of them are here today. Uh, but Alice Paul, who marched and organized and lobbied like her life depended on it just to get women the right to vote. And of course, to Senator Menendez, who just recently joined forces with Senator Cory Booker here from New Jersey to reintroduce the Equal Rights Amendment in her honor <laughs> generations later. Thank you, Senator, for doing that. Um, he is an extraordinary leader for all of us. Um, he's not only, though, a tireless champion for folks here in New Jersey, uh, he is a fierce fighter for women everywhere. Uh, and I think at this point in our history, most importantly, he's a fighter for the fact that health care is a right in this country, not a privilege, and everyone deserves it everywhere. We've never uh, needed him more. Uh, so uh, this is the first time I've actually been out to see folks since last Friday. And I just want to, uh, it was an extraordinary day. And so. <laughs> I just want to say, I mean, thanks to incredible champions on Capitol Hill, but I think something that has been underreported is thanks to millions of people across this country who marched for women's rights and women's equality. We won a huge victory last Friday. And, and on behalf of the more than two and a half million patients we see every year, I wanna, I wanna say thank you. I think everyone knows now that a bill that was basically going to throw millions of women and other uh, folks off of their health insurance, that was going to end access to Planned Parenthood, that was going to threaten maternity benefits and family planning, failed to even be voted on the House floor of the United States House of Representatives. And that was because of you. It was extraordinary. Um, as, uh, as the senator said, I, you know, I've been an organizer my whole life. I have never seen the outpouring of, of activism and organizing and brave patients telling their stories. 
uh, in, in town hall meetings all across this country. And the interesting thing uh, is from my post in uh, working for this incredible organization, every single time they came after Planned Parenthood, we actually just got more popular. Uh, and the, the uh, amazing thing is actually the day before the vote, uh, the Quinnipiac poll showed that 80% of Americans wanted Planned Parenthood to get federal funding for the health care that we provide. And that's, that's pretty amazing. And, but, but it's not about polling and it's not about politics. The thing that's important is because you marched and because people spoke up and spoke out and folks on the Hill showed such great courage, uh, tomorrow morning another 8,118 folks will get health care at Planned Parenthood clinics all across America. And that's who we stand for and that's who we fight for. Um, of course, this isn't the beginning. I mean, this isn't the end, this is actually just the beginning. One of my favorite quotes that my mother used to use from Edna St. Vincent Millay, she said, um, when you think, boy, can't we just move on? She said famously, life isn't one thing after another. It's the same damn thing over and over again. Uh, and it definitely feels like that in this fight for women's rights. But I think for all of our ups and downs and uh, the sort of roadblocks that come in our way, I do believe we are seeing a sea change in this country. Um, more than ever before, people understand that when women get access to health care uh, and they have the rights and they have someone there to give it to them, they can finish school and they can pursue a career and they can raise their families. Um, the day after the inauguration, and maybe some of you were there, we witnessed the largest outpouring uh, of public demonstration for anything in our country. More than four million people marched the day after the inauguration. And um, the, uh, it was amazing. I, I happened to be in Washington, D.C., which was extraordinary. It wasn't a march. It was more like a move in place because there was no room to march. There were so many people. But the thing that was important is it wasn't just in Washington, D.C. or New York or San Francisco. There were folks in Tallahassee, Florida. There were folks uh, in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. And yes, there were a lot of folks here in Trenton, New Jersey. And wouldn't Alice Paul have been proud of that? Um, and of course, in Washington, though, it was pink uh, for as far as the eye could see. In fact, one of the things I love, and thank you, New Jersey, for this, um, there were so many people flocking to Washington, D.C. The rest stops on the New Jersey Turnpike temporarily converted all of the men's restrooms into women's restrooms, okay? <laughs> That's real power now. That's when we've arrived. But uh, it's so interesting what Senator Menendez said, because the thing that really struck me about the marches is that it wasn't just women marching, it was men. Um, it was fathers and grandfathers who were marching for their daughters and their granddaughters. And I think, you know, we all had a reason that we marched that day. I marched for my two daughters, Lily and Hannah, uh, because there's not a woman in America who wants her daughter to have fewer rights than she does. Um, but um, isn't that right? And, but I also march for my son, Daniel, who is as fierce a feminist as his two sisters. God love him. <laughs> And, and we did, we marched for all the women who came before us, who fought uh, for our rights. Ivan Helena, uh, my mom, Ann Richards. Um, they taught us women have never gotten anything that we didn't fight for. And so um, it's interesting because I look back now, actually Planned Parenthood is turning 100 years old this year, which is kind of extraordinary if you think about it. But back when we started, women didn't even have the right to vote. We didn't have the right to anything. Um, in fact, back then, the two most common reasons uh, for death among women of childbearing age were tuberculosis and complications from pregnancy and childbirth. Um, and Planned Parenthood was started by a nurse named Margaret Sanger, who saw her own mother die after, get this, 11 children and seven miscarriages. That was the story of women's lives uh, back then. And so in October uh, 1916, along with her sister Ethel and a volunteer named Fania Mendel, they opened the very first birth control center just across the river um, in a tiny storefront in Brooklyn. And for 10 cents a piece, women could get a little pamphlet that told them how to prevent an unintended pregnancy. And I love the photos from those days because there are women in long dresses pushing baby uh, strollers, uh, buggies really at the time with babies on their back, desperate, lined up down the block 
to get information about how to prevent an unintended pregnancy. And so as the story goes, 10 days later, an undercover policewoman masqueraded uh, as a mother, she busts Margaret, throws her in jail, where Margaret taught all of her fellow inmates about family planning. <laughs> and that's how the movement um, was, was born. Of course, here in New Jersey, there was a woman named Cora Louise Hartshorn from Short Hills, New Jersey, who went to see Margaret speak in, in Carnegie Hall, and she was so excited, she came back home, uh, and with a friend, Henrietta Hart, she helped the first form the first Short Hills Birth Control Committee. And thank goodness we've actually progressed since that moment. But it was a radical notion then that women could plan their own, own families. And a few years later, the New Jersey Birth Control League o opened the Newark Maternal Health Care Center. It hasn't been that long ago, my friends. And women came from all over the state to get honest, accurate information uh, about uh, reproductive health care. Over the last century, we've grown to more than 650 health centers. We're in every single state in America. We have 26 health centers here in the Garden State we're very proud of. And one in five women in this country has been to Planned Parenthood for health care. Um, and so many things have changed. Um, but one thing I just have to shout out, because Senator Menendez mentioned the Affordable Care Act, one of the most revolutionary things in the Affordable Care Act is we got every single woman on insurance now gets her birth control covered at no copay. Every kind of birth control. It's absolutely revolutionary. And it's not just, I mean, it's, it's really so interesting that we're, I can't believe we're litigating birth control again, but um, we are actually, largely as a result of that, we're at a 30 year low for unintended pregnancy in the United States of America. Um, and I think as importantly um, for the young women who are counting on us, we are at a historic all-time low for teenage pregnancy and we can never go back in America before we give every young woman her opportunity. Um, and as a result, I mean, sort of as the president spoke, we, we're now actually, the number of college who graduate, the number of young women who graduate from college is five times more than what it was before we had access to family planning. Women are now more than half the undergraduate students, more than half the grad, uh, law and medical students. Uh, they earn the majority of master's and, and doctoral degrees. And now, as you'll hear today, women are command chief master sergeants. They are police chiefs, rabbis, Grammy-nominated music educators, prosecutors, advocates for survivals of sexual assault, and yes, sophisticated sisters. That's what women are doing today. Um, and mark my words, in our lifetime, a woman is going to be president of the United States, whether they like it or not. Um, of course, Senator Menendez, um, I always have believed if, if more members of Congress could get pregnant, we wouldn't be fighting about Planned Parenthood and family planning right now, right? But however, we got some work to do. Um, at Planned Parenthood, our motto is care no matter what. Now, depending on where you sit, that's a promise or a threat. Um, but we are proud to provide expert health care to millions of folks in this country. Um, and as importantly, we're proud to welcome everyone who comes through our doors. No matter where you live, no matter how much money you make, no matter who you are or who you love, and no matter your immigrant or refugee status, you deserve health care in America, and we are proud to provide it to you. And that is why I think for the majority of people in this country, Planned Parenthood actually isn't the problem. Planned Parenthood is in large part the solution. Uh, but we've got a lot of work to do uh, and we're not done marching yet. Uh, we've got our work cut out for us. Um, now is the time to follow in the footsteps of the generations of women who came before and now it's time to fight for the rights of the women who will come after. Uh, so, thank you. Um, happy Women's History Month, and here's to the fight ahead. Thanks very much. Let's hear it again for Cecile Richards. Cecile, we are so lucky to have you here today, but more importantly, we as women are so lucky to have you advocating and fighting every day for all of us, access to health care for women for all. Thank you again.
And yes, we do it over and over and over again, and this New Jersey legislature will continue to fight over and over and over again to refund or restore funding for Planned Parenthood here in New Jersey. I would like now to introduce the Camden Sophisticated Sisters for a dance performance. Welcome Camden Sophisticated Sisters.
Wow. Camden, sophisticated sisters and a few brothers. Wow, what talent, what presence. And now I would like to call back up to the stage Senator Robert Menendez, Cecile Richards, and Robert Jr. to present the awards for our trailblazers. Well, I thought I had great salsa moves, but how about those Camden sophisticated sisters, huh? And I see there are also some enlightened brothers, too, as part of it. So. And once again, please join me in thanking Cecile Richards for her tremendous motivating speech and for being with us. Now, my son Rob, who grew up in a house in which he is definitely a feminist, uh, ultimately has joined with me every year to make these presentations on behalf of, uh, in, in the name of his, in honor of his grandmother. So it's a privilege for us to continue that tradition this year. Rob's a very successful attorney. He just got engaged. He's getting married in June, so that ends all those opportunities. So. Yeah, and she has come up from Florida to be with us. Uh, my daughter, Alicia, who is an accomplished journalist, a TV personality, uh, and whose millennial insights have inspired and informed many, uh, she is bringing up with her a special guest uh, who's really behaved really well, uh, Evangelina Menendez Odio, uh, who's coming up to the stage to help us give the awards as well. So. And I want to recognize her uh, husband, Carlos, who is here. Carlos, thank you for making the journey all the way up from Florida. We appreciate it. Not bad. I think she and Cecile coordinated today, so. <laughs> okay, it's now our pleasure and honor to present the 2017 Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction Trailblazer Awards. Our first woman of distinction has spent her entire career serving our country. Stationed at the Joint Base McGuire Dix Lake, Hearst in Burlington County, State Command Chief Master Sergeant Janine Filari is responsible for matters influencing the health, morale, welfare, and professional development of more than 2,100 New Jersey Air National Guard enlisted members. Chief Filari began her career in the U.S. Air Force she served in active duty from 1989 to 1998. She was trained in the Air Force's paralegal career field. In 2000, after transferring to the Air Force Reserve, she joined the U.S. Department of Labor's Office of Regional Solicitor in Philadelphia. Later, she joined the New Jersey Air National Guard, and in 2015, she was promoted to Command Chief Master Sergeant. As a senior paralegal manager, as the Air Combat Command, as the Air National Guard, Chief Filari has also served as the Judge Advocate General Counsel, where she helps guide the professional development for 200 paralegals across the nation. She is a passionate advocate for the men and women of the New Jersey National Air Guard, always working to put their needs first as they serve and protect our country. Chief Filari, thank you for your service to New Jersey and to our country. It's a, present, it's a pleasure and honor to uh, give you the 2017 Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction Trailblazer Award.
Thank you, Senator Menendez, distinguished guests. And if I could just take a couple minutes to, or a couple seconds actually, to thank my military mentors, um, the New Jersey Air National Guard, Adjutant General, uh, Brigadier General Kniff, uh, Colonel McKay, he's the Air National Guard Chief of Staff, Command Chiefs, uh, Daryl Fortner and Jim McCluskey, retired Command Chief, Vince Morton, retired Chief, Lee Sizik, and all of my military and civilian colleagues in the audience today, and my family and friends. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to attend today's event. I am very honored and humbled to accept such a prestigious award in honor of your mother, Evangelina Menendez. And I also would like to accept this award on behalf of all the men and women of the New Jersey Air National Guard, as I did not get to where I am today in my military career without them. I recently had the privilege of attending an Air Force symposium and had a chance to hear our 18th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Chief Wright, speak. I was most intrigued by his response to a junior enlisted member's question. The question was, what is the best advice you can give us for our military career? His response was essentially three words, decide and decide early, and then stick with your plan. These words struck a deep chord with me. As a young airman, you just focus on doing, getting the job done, and don't spend a lot of time thinking about what you're doing. For so many of us in the military, life often get, oftentimes gets busy and stressful. And so a few weeks ago, listening to Chief Wright speak, I quickly thought back 27 years ago to early on in my career. And I didn't realize it at the time, but that was exactly what I did. I decided, and I decided early that I wanted a successful military career. Rank never played a factor in that goal. No matter what job I had, I wanted to do the best job that I could. The military has so much to offer. You just have to apply yourself, be dedicated, and take advantage of every opportunity, and never forget about taking care of your people. Where else can you learn a profession, learn how to be a leader, help communities around the world, obtain an education, and raise a family. I never for one second take anything for granted in my military career. I did not get here alone and have had the honor and privilege of working with the military's finest men and women. I am also in deep gratitude to my family who have always stuck by my side no matter how the hectic work schedule could get and they always understand. And for that, I am very lucky. I am proud to wear this uniform every day. Proud to be a mom, a wife, a daughter, a grandmother, an aunt, and an airman. I am especially proud to be a member of such a diverse military community where I am recognized as a gender neutral airman and have been afforded every opportunity to succeed in my military profession. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Filari, for your service to our country. Please give her another round of applause. Our next honoree has already dazzled us once this afternoon, thanks to the incredible performance of her students in the Camden Sophisticated Sisters. Tawanda Jones is a community leader, a dancer, and advocate for children and families in the city of Camden. Wanda and her husband, Robert, incorporated the Camden Sophisticated Sisters Drill Team as a 501c3 nonprofit in 1986, as well as partner organizations, the Distinguished Brothers and the Almighty Percussion Sound Drumline. The Sophisticated Sisters are today recognized as one of the best drill groups in the country, specializing in the forms of dance that range from hip-hop and step to ballet and jazz. Throughout the four years, here's what I really want you to focus on. Uh, throughout the years, Tawanda has shepherded more than 4,000 children through her dance programs. And the students who join the Sophisticated Sisters Troop boast a 100% graduation rate, with 90% going to pursue a higher education. Tawanda, your work is a testament to the power of the arts and the important education, and we are honored to give you the Evangelina Menendez 2017 Woman of Distinction Trailblazer Award.
I'm not going to be long-winded. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Senator Menendez, for this awe-inspiring honor in memory of your courageous mother, Miss Evangelina Menendez. I am greatly humbled, and I would be remiss if I did not share this honor with the prominent trailblazers who shaped me into the woman that I am today. My mother, who taught me how to be fearless, never take no for an answer, to my grandmother, who made me stay in the house for an entire summer to write, I must learn self-control because of temper <laughs> tantrums. <laughs> and to my mother-in-law, who taught me inner strength as she fought brain and liver cancer. To my husband, who deals with my craziness, my hectic schedules, I'm truly honored to be your wife. <laughs> to my babies, Camden's sophisticated sisters drill team, distinguished brothers, and the almighty percussion sound drum line. I want you to look over to the right, to the tiny tots, and remember these words. I'm quoting from Michelle Obama. When you've worked hard and done well and walked through the doorway of opportunity, you do not slam it shut behind you. You reach back and give other folks the same chances that help you succeed. I love you so much and thank you dearly. Give to wonder another hand of applause. Our next award winner made history in Bergen County when she became the first female chief of police in 2015. For Chief Kathy Madalone, this role was beyond well-deserved, the result of more than two decades of distinguished service, a proud alum of Montclair State University, uh, the chief joined the Bergenfield Police Department in 1994. Over the years, she rose through the ranks. She led several bureaus and eventually became manager of the Bergenfield Police Department's accreditation program. And in January, she joined the Bergen County Police Chief's Executive Board. Throughout her service, Chief Madelone has been recognized for commitment to excellence, receiving the Chief Harry Wilde Award for Academic Achievement from the New Jersey Chiefs of Police Association and completing the FBI's National Academy in Quantico, Virginia. At a time when some question the service of our men and women in blue, I know our communities are safer and our state is stronger thanks to trailblazers like Chief Kathy Madalone. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our distinguished woman of achievement, Chief Madalone. Say that every year? I, I just made sure he was going to give it back to me. <laughs> so I need to take my glasses off to actually read, not put them on. So thank you, Senator and Robert. Oh, somebody's water. Dr. Cole and the staff of Montclair, my uh, alma mater. Thank them for their gracious, being gracious hosts. I'd like to thank our team and her crew for doing the logistics and making everything run smooth today. My friends and family in attendance, thank you for coming and supporting me. And that's them. <laughs> Can we give one more shout out for the dancers? I think they are... Uh... <laughs> Definitely some prospective students for Dr. Cole, wherever she is. I'm gonna start with a quote from Sheryl Sandberg. We need women at all levels, including the top, to change the dynamic, reshape the conversation, to make sure women's voices are heard and heeded, not overlooked and ignored. 
I've been very lucky throughout my life and my career to have great colleagues and friends and family. Tonight, uh, today with me, uh, Captain Nikki Luster from Union City. I was, uh, went through the academy with her. I'm very appreciative for her to come out. Also here today with me is my borough administrator, Corey Gallo. Or Cornbluth, who's my councilwoman and my police commissioner. We have a great working relationship, which is very paramount in uh, providing the best services for our town. Also here is Mr. Jack Hoffman, who was a former councilman in the late 80s, early 90s. A testament to his devotion to Bergenfield. He's here today. Thank you, Jack. Throughout my life, I've learned many, many lessons on how to be a good person and a good leader in my police career. One is to surround yourself with great people. I have an amazing administration. I have my captain, Mustafa Raba, here today with me. A great group of men and women who patrol the streets and keep my residents safe. And I have two of my dispatchers here who do an amazing job keeping us officers all safe. So thank you all. <clears throat> Some of the other lessons that I've learned is to treat everyone with the same respect and dignity from the custodian in the building to the top executive in the office. Affect positive change, share your knowledge, inspire others, and be a role model. And I hope I've been a great role model for my three nieces that are here today, Amanda, Caitlin, and Haley. And I have with me also an intern, Elizabeth Bedoya. She's a college student, not at Montclair, but at Rutgers. It's all right. <laughs> uh, but she's come here, and she's come from Columbia, and she started with me when she was 17, a high school senior, did an internship, and now she's back as a college student doing another internship. Um, also with me is Meredith Frihas. Meredith was one of my first, um, we have a police youth academy in our first year. Meredith was cadet number one, and I, I, I got her permission to share the story. Um, she, after the first day, we treat it like, just like a military police academy, and we yell at the kids. They get yelled at. And Meredith went home crying, and she spoke to her mom, and her mom encouraged her to come back the next day. And if she wasn't happy at lunchtime, she was able to call her mom to go home. I'm proud to say that Meredith not only finished that rest of that week, but came back for year two and year three. And her number one has been retired, and there will never be a number one in the Youth Academy again. So thank you, Meredith. I'll end with a quote from Michelle Obama. I'm an example of what is possible when girls from the very beginning of their lives are loved and nurtured by people around them. I was surrounded by extraordinary women in my life when, who taught me about quiet strength and dignity. I lost my mom when I was 10, and I was lucky enough to have older sisters who were very supportive and an amazing brother and sister-in-law who raised me from age 11. Tony is my second mom. She had five kids of her own to raise, and she opened her home and her heart and helped mold me into the person that I am today. So thank you. Let's recognize again Chief Madeline. We appreciate what she does every day in honoring us. Our next honoree is a trailblazer in the field of music education, a Grammy-nominated music educator, the New Jersey Education Association 2017 Teacher of the Year. Our Jean Safari has been inspiring students with the power of music at Pascack Valley High School since 2005. As a teacher, she's brought new courses like AP Music Theory to the high school, designed nationally recognized vocal programs, taken her students on the road to perform everywhere from Los Angeles, California to Dublin, Ireland. In 2013, Arjean co-founded the nonprofit New Jersey Youth Theater Arts Company, expanding her reach to better the lives of even more New Jersey children. An accomplished chamber musician herself, Arjean has studied in renowned institutions like the Yerevan State Musical College in Armenia and otherwise. Did I mention she's fluent in three languages? Arjean, the students of Pascack Valley High School are blessed 
to have you as a teacher, and we are thrilled to recognize the Teacher of the Year with the 2017 Evangelina Menendez Woman of Distinction Trailblazer. Wow, what an honor to be here with you. Um, I want to thank everyone who came today to support us, and uh, my family, my friends, um, the Education Association, my students, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Dear Senator Menendez, thank you from the bottom of my heart for recognizing me among this accomplished, extraordinary women. And in the honor of your mother, a true model with an inspiring story of an immigrant who raised her son to become a United States Senator. As an immigrant myself, I admire the courage and strong values that she instilled in you and her legacy is incredibly inspiring. I know that I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for my parents. They are my heroes and I'm accepting this award on their behalf. Growing up in Armenia, my sister and I didn't have lots of material goods, but we had an overwhelming love of our parents. Both scientists, they recognized our talents early on and encouraged our musical studies, providing endless support and relentlessly challenging us to improve. My dad always said, you must educate yourself. Education is the only treasure no one can ever take away from you. And my mom, taught me the value of hard work, perseverance, and striving for excellence. She is the strongest person I've ever met in my life. Today, these are the values I pass on to my own children and to my students. I tell them, you can accomplish anything if you put your mind in it, regardless of the circumstances, where you come from, and what obstacles you face. I'm an educator who is honored to be a part of many outstanding men and women's lives. When I look into my students' eyes, I see future artists, scientists, musicians, politicians, but most importantly, good citizens of our country and the entire world. And you really are. As we travel together across the states and even around the world, you show respect for other cultures by learning and sharing their music. You show, through your music, incredible human qualities, such as empathy, collaboration, love. In the words of Senator Menendez, the arts don't just create entertainment and joy that enrich our lives, but they highlight our shared humanity, spark innovation, and inspire us all to pursue our dreams and to make what seems impossible, possible. I believe that every child deserves a hero. Senator Menendez's hero is his brave mother, Evangelina Menendez. My heroes are my parents and my teachers who inspired me to push myself farther than I could ever possibly imagine. So here's my question to you, my dear students. Who is your hero? Who inspires and motivates you to be the best that you can be? I challenge you to aspire to become that hero in someone else's life. I challenge you to reach higher than you can ever possibly imagine. And you remember that it is always impossible until it's done. I know that you can do it because you inspire me every day to be the best that I can possibly be. I cannot help but sing my praises to you for allowing me to give you a key, major and minor, to find your own perfect pitch. Please join me in recognizing the Teacher of the Year, Arjun Safari. Our next award winner is someone who Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor might call a wise Latina. 
In July 2015, Esther Suarez was sworn in as the first female and the first Hispanic to serve as county prosecutor in Hudson County's 176-year-old history. How's that for trailblazing? As the, as the county's chief law enforcement officer, Prosecutor Suarez oversees a budget of more than $23 million, a team of approximately 300, assist, 300 assistant prosecutors, detectives, and support staff. In this role, she also helps supervise more than 2,500 law enforcement officers in 17 police agencies in Hudson County's 12 municipalities. Before serving as prosecutor, she was a judge of the Superior Court of New Jersey for more than five years. As judge, she presided in the Civil Division in Hudson County and in the Family Division in Passaic County. And before her time on the bench, Prosecutor Suarez served as Bergen County's counsel. Today, she is a member of the New Jersey New York Bars. Before blazing trials in the courtroom, she studied at Rutgers School of Law and before that at Douglas College. Prosecutor Suarez, thank you so much for your administration of justice in our state. It is our honor to recognize you with the 2017 Evangelina Menendez Woman of Distinction Trailblazer Award. Senator Menendez, thank you for that gracious introduction and for hosting this incredible event. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Buenas tardes, hermanos y hermanas. It's a pleasure to be here to share this special day with you. I want to thank my family and my friends for coming today to support me at this wonderful event. It's a huge honor to be recognized by Senator Menendez at his Women's History Month celebration. And I join with all of you in recognizing all of the achievements of the other honorees here today. I'm honored to be standing besides all of you. For me personally, what makes this honor so very special is the name and the nature of the award itself. The Evangelina Menendez Trailbla Trailblazer Award. It's a woman who was a true trailblazer in her time, someone who exhibited courage, strength, wisdom, and tireless determination in her life. Some of the guests in the audience today may not know that in New Jersey, the county prosecutor is the chief law enforcement officer in the county. And as Senator Menendez read in his introduction, I am the first female and the first Hispana to serve in the capacity of Hudson County prosecutor. And for that, I'm so grateful. I'm blessed to work in a job where I know I'm able to serve and directly impact the community I call home, the same community where I grew up and I spent the majority of my life. I'm so appreciative of the fact that many other women and many Hispanics are able to look at me as the person at the helm of the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office and identify with me. And I'm most proud when a woman or a person of Hispanic descent tells me that they're proud to see me serve in this capacity. <laughs> However, I was not appointed prosecutor on my own. I relied on the goodwill and the support of many others. This is not the type of position that one can ever, ever achieve due only to their own accomplishments. I've had the benefit of having many caring and loyal friends and family members who've looked out for me and kept a good watch out for any landmines I might encounter. I've slowly and cautiously walked, for the most part, in the footsteps of other women like Evangelina Menendez, and I relied on their experiences and their hardships to guide me through the process and the perils of being a Hispanic woman in what has predominantly been a white male's career path. So you see, I believe that I'm just walking in those footsteps that were created in the sand by stronger and braver women than me. I, or dare I say we, owe those women a debt of gratitude. It's those individuals who have navigated uncharted territory with no roadmap and no ability to know how their pioneer status might be received by others. 
and I am hoping and expecting that I will make it easier for every generation behind me, a generation that includes my many nieces who are here in the audience today. Sarah, Emmy, Annabelle Wheatley, Sofia Suarez, Sofia Padin, and Allison Mayer, and I didn't forget about little Marquito, he's the only boy in the group. I, I hope that I am helping to break the mold of a stereotype so that I can show my nieces and others that we don't all neatly fall into one category, that as women or as Hispanas, we are not all alike and we cannot be painted with a broad brush. With a broad brush. I believe that it is the responsibility of my generation to shatter glass ceilings, to level the play playing field so that we can make it easier for the next generation of women. I promise you that I will continue to pay it forward and this, and do the same for others as women like Angelina Menendez have done for me. And I encourage all of the women today in this auditorium to do the same in your lives. I'm proud to be honored to receive this award. I thank you for your kindness. Que Dios me los bendiga. Thank you. Please join me in congratulating once again Prosecutor Esther Suarez. Our final honoree is a tireless fighter for women and families. Patricia Teffenhardt is Executive Director of the New Jersey Coalition Against Sexual Assault. In this role, she elevates the voice of sexual violence survivors and service providers by advocating for survivor-centered legislation improving training in our communities, and supporting statewide rape prevention strategies. Under her leadership, the Coalition Against Sexual Assault successfully advocated for the passage of the Sexual Assault Survivors Protection Act of 2015. As a result, New Jersey victims of sexual violence have improved access to protective orders. She also helped create the governor's appointed Campus Sexual Assault Task Force and successfully lobbied to increase funding for sexual violence victim services by 78%. She is a proud graduate of Douglas College, the Rutgers School of Public Affairs, and the winner of the 2014 Alice Paul Equality Award, one of our state's most distinguished honors. Alice Paul, by the way, was a former Evangelina Menendez Distinguished Service uh, honoree posthumously uh, several years ago. So it is great to find someone who is also uh, honored in her name. It is no surprise that NJ Biz has named Pat one of the most uh, New Jersey's top 40 under 40 professionals. And that for the past three years she's been included on the New Jersey Senate Majority Leader Women's Power List. But to present this biggest uh, uh, part of this award, I'm going to need a little help from Patricia's biggest fan. Lincoln at eight years old is following in the footsteps of his mother as a trailblazer. Already making his voice heard at this year's Women's March, I think we all know who's going to be on the Democratic ticket in 2056. <laughs> so Lincoln, can you come here and help me introduce your mom? Introduce my mom, Patricia Teffenhart. You've already heard from the best part of me, so I'm not sure that I can really top the words of Lincoln Teffenhart Makos, but I'm going to try. I never paid much attention to the words, you can't. It might be because at six years old, I was drinking hot chocolate out of a mug given to me by my parents that read on one side, a woman's place is in the house, and on the other side, Senate and Supreme Court. <laughs> I never paid respect to the words, that's the way we've always done it. 
It might be because my activist spirit was fueled by reading To Kill a Mockingbird and Civil Disobedience, from studying cases like Tinker versus Des Moines and Brown versus the Board of Education. It might be that I never um, referred to the words, you're too young, energetic, or ambitious with any energy, because challenging those perceptions has built character and skill, malleability and courage. And overcoming those perceptions has made celebrating the victories even sweeter. I think because of these things, I've spent my whole life preparing for this job leading the New Jersey Coalition Against Sexual Assault, to be in a position that addresses and confronts institutionalized and intersectional oppression, to call out misogyny and highlight the impact and prevalence of rape culture, to be in a position to speak about the nuance and contextual realities relating to sexual violence in New Jersey. The FBI recognizes rape as the second most violent crime, the first of which is murder, yet nationally only 8% of rapists will spend a day in jail. That New Jersey currently has an unacceptable two-year civil statute of limitations for sexual assault, yet a six-year statute of limitations for trespassing. And that 75 to 80% of survivors know their perpetrator, reminding us that the CSI depiction of sexual assault creates a false narrative about sexual violence prevention. But what we've learned is that there is power in numbers. It is, after all, why the coalition was created 36 years ago, and it is what's been transforming our social and political landscape as late. So please follow NJ Casa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay informed about the ways in which we're working to create a safer New Jersey and how you can help. I want to close by saying that I recognize that I stand here today on the shoulders of greatness. Women like Evangelina Menendez, and women like my mom, Virginia Teffenhart, who is with us today. Women who instilled in their children a passion for service, and the understanding that's doing what's right isn't always easy. I know that I didn't get here on my own. I'm here today with a village of women and men who have propelled me and supported my success. Family members, former bosses, current members of NJ Casa's Board of Trustees, friends, colleagues, former colleagues, and fierce, tenacious advocates that provide critical support for sexual violence survivors at New Jersey's county-based rape crisis centers. They are the warriors changing lives 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Today, I salute you for all that you do with little fanfare recognition. You are inspirational. Can you please stand up and can you guys all give them a round of applause? Thank you also to my husband, who I met many years ago as he was a starving doctoral student, and I, a nonprofit professional, supplementing my entry level salary as a bartender in New Brunswick. <laughs> We've come a long way, you and I, Jason Makos, and I'm thankful for your love and friendship, and I'm very proud of the life we've created. And to my son, Lincoln, who you've now all met, you remind me daily that parenting is a privilege, and that with every generation, we increase our ability to create a kinder, more compassionate society. You remind me of the good in people and why fighting for justice, safety, and equity is so important. And finally, thank you, Senator Menendez and the entire Menendez family for this recognition. Our work of ending oppression is multi-layered and we require many stakeholders and champions. I'm thankful for your commitment to equality and justice. My promise to you, Senator Cecile Richards, my fellow honorees, our state legislators who are with us today, is that this is still just my beginning and that I'm doubling down on my commitment to use my voice, my privilege, and my position to create a better, more just society. And with that, I'll leave you with this quote from Audre Lorde. I'm not free while my, any woman is unfree, even when her shackles are different from my own. Thank you. Please join me once again in congratulating Patricia Teffenhar, Executive Director of the New Jersey Coalition Against Sexual Assault. And please join me one last time in recognizing all of the distinguished women of achievement that have been recognized today. My thanks to Cecile Richards, who stayed the whole program with us, which is extraordinary. Thank you, Cecile.
My thank you to my son Rob, my daughter Alicia, and my precious Evangelina, who's been so good up here on stage. And a special thanks to uh, our team, Hasegans, and all of my staff who work tirelessly to have a great moment for these exceptional women. Thank you very much for coming.